that. So we have the parabolic equation, which is partial u, partial t, is equal to kappa of partial square u, partial x squared. We are going to analyze this, this equation analytically using what's called Fourier analysis. Fourier analysis is a very powerful tool in studying differential equations, especially when you have periodic boundary condition. And when you have non-periodic boundary condition, the qualitative result of you, what you get in Fourier analysis is very likely to translate into the non-periodic boundary condition case. So the Fourier analysis is expanding the u, which is a function of x. So u is the solution to the partial differential equation. Kappa is a constant. And we are thinking of a spatial domain of 0 and 2 pi. Okay. So if we have a, such a domain, and if the u is periodic, which means it ends exactly where it begins, then I can expand ux as a summation of u hat of k times a sinusoidal wave, which I can write as exponential of i k x. And this k is summed over from minus infinity to infinity. Mm -hmm. k is an integer, exactly. k is summed over all possible integers. And e to the i k x, what does it look like? What does e to the i k x look like? e to the i k x looks like a cosine of kx plus an imaginary part of sine kx. Okay, so this u hat of k is a complex number that has imaginary and real parts. And if the, if the u hat of k is exactly the conjugate of u hat of minus k, then the imaginary parts cancels and you have perfect sines and cosines added up together to form a solution u as a function of x. The reason we introduce Fourier series, one is because any periodic function can be written in such a way. Okay. And two is that when we're looking at partial differential equations, we have spatial derivatives. And spatial derivatives work very, very nicely with Fourier series. So for example, when we look at this case, what is the first order derivative of this u? When we take the first order derivatives, of course, the derivative commutes with this summation. And u hat of k is just a number. It doesn't depend on x. So u hat of k is also here. And we only have the derivative of e to the i k x dx. And if you take, if you take that derivative, it becomes i k times e to the i k x. So taking derivative to a Fourier series is like multiplying i k to each of the u hat k's in the expansion using Fourier series. It translates a differential operator just to a multiplication. So that's very nice. How about the second order derivative of u with respect to x? It's basically doing that again, right? It's good. It's doing that again. So what I get is another infinite summation of u k hat of i k squared times e to the times e to the
ikx. And what is ik square? ik square is minus k square because i square is minus 1. Minus k square, u head of k, u to the ikx. Third derivative, multiply by ik again. Fourth derivative, multiply by ik again, right? So good. Now, this is only looking at a function of only space. When we are talking about the solution to this partial differential equation, u is a function of not only x, but also what? But also t, right? And when u is a function of x and t, this is even nicer. So if you take the derivative of x and t, oh, let's don't take the derivative yet. Let's look at if I expand a function of u and t into Fourier series, only in x, what do I get? What, what becomes different in the expansion? u hat becomes a function of time, exactly. This is like expanding, this is like looking at a function u of x and t as functions of x at different t, right? For each t, I look at u x of t as a function of x, and I expand that function of x using Fourier series. As a result, the u hat of k is going to be different for every slice of t. That means u hat is going to be a function of t. And this is a separation of variable because now the second derivative of x becomes a summation. Still, k goes from minus infinity to infinity. Minus k squared is still the same. u hat of k as a function of t e to the i k x. I can do this because u hat of k is a function of t, but not x. So all the spatial derivatives goes right through u hat of t and into the exponentials. And this formula is great, especially when combined with, when substituted into the differential equation. Let's do that. Oops. So let's substitute the Fourier series into this differential equation. Kappa is still here. K goes from minus infinity to infinity minus k square u hat of k e to the i k x. So this looks normal. But we should also realize that du dt can also be expanded using Fourier series. So let's write it over here. That is a summation of k goes to minus infinity to infinity of now when you're taking the Fourier series, a time derivative, the e to the ikx is not a function of time. The only function of time is the u hats. So we have the time derivative of the u hat times e to the i k x. When you have two sides of an equality, right, two sides of equality, both represented using Fourier series, you know that the coefficients has to match. This is because if you study Fourier series analysis, you know that you can multiply both sides of the equation with e to the i k x and integrate. And you are going to isolate only one of the terms because the inner product of e to the i k x with the i k prime x is going to be zero if k is not equal to k prime. So you can isolate the terms from each other and say that so, oops, I'm doing this. So, the, uh, the partial derivative of u hat of k. And by the way, this is I shouldn't write this as a partial derivative anymore because u hat is only a function of t. This should be a du hat dt, right? 
partial derivative operates only on functions of two variables. So this is du hat dt has to equal to minus k square u hat of k. Does this equation ring a bell with you? Yes, thank you. I missed the larger kappa. Should be minus a kappa times k square u hat k. Thank you. So up to this point, we get no longer a partial differential equation, but a what? OD, ordinary differential equation. And do you know what is the solution to this ordinary differential equation? It's an exponential function, exactly. So u hat of k as a function of t is equal to u hat of k at time 0, whatever it is, times exponential of minus kappa k square t. Right? The behavior of this function, let me go, go back. The behavior of this function is going to be like that. So for small k, when k is equal to 0, what does the function look like? It's constant. So k equal to 0 means constant term. So e to the i 0 x, which means that term doesn't depend on x. It's a constant in space. So a constant in space term in the Fourier series doesn't change with time. Come on. Okay. Now let's look at a small k. So for small k, it's an exponential decay because minus kappa k squared is always negative. Small k is a slow exponential decay. And for the larger case, for the larger case, it can be a very steep exponential decay. Right? So the solution to this differential equation is a decay to a constant. Right? Because at the end, as t goes to infinity, so this is t. As as t goes to infinity, all the terms become zero except for the k equal to zero term. 